Bill Waddell. I'm the owner and CEO, chief cook and bottle washer at Chocolate Nirvana Cafe and Bakery out on Fort Jackson Boulevard. Uh, what we do is we're on a mission, and uh, it's a really critical mission. And I have brought something that, that says this mission exactly. Excuse this, this may be a little cat hair on it, but <laughs> it's all about bringing Nirvana to the masses, one cake at a time. <laughs> so that's our, that's our motto. Uh, as I said, we're out on Fort Jackson Boulevard, and our cakes are known all over Columbia. They're really known all over the country. I actually have a guy that flies in twice a year from Seattle, Washington, and rides back with one of our cakes in his lap to go back to Seattle. He has friends here, so he uses an excuse to come here, but he had one of our cakes at a wedding, and ever since, we had, we get a call a week before he gets here, have a good cake ready. Wow. We have people come in from Charleston, we've had them from Birmingham, we have them from Greenville, from Charlotte, because there's nothing quite like our cakes, and you'll get a chance to taste those later on today. But uh, a little bit about uh, our story. Uh, we started off with three different businesses. Chocolate Nirvana has been in Columbia for over 25 years. Started off as Classic Cakes, and we're the third owners of it. Uh, we also owned the Box Lunch Company and Happy Cookers. And we had, the Box Lunch kind of did low-end corporate catering type things, sandwiches for lunch and learn type things. Happy Cooker was more of a full-service caterer and had a little cafe out front. And then Chocolate Nirvana basically did cakes to order. And it was our vision from the beginning to be able to take these three businesses, put them under one roof, to cut the cost of having to run three different kitchens. But at the same time, we felt like all of these different ways of, of catering food could be brought under one roof, and it would be more synergy that way than each one run independently. It's taken us seven years to get to that point. We bought Box Lunch Company in September of 2006. So we're in September of 2014, we opened the doors over on Fort Jackson Boulevard with the first time we had all, all of them under one roof and all able to do uh, their jobs. We had had them all under one roof at 1531 Richland, but we couldn't serve lunch over there uh, and we could not uh, do the catering out of there. So we were basically shut down in that operation for over a year. But now we're back up and running in what I think is probably the most vibrant section of Columbia right now. Uh, the kind of growth and what's happening over there on the eastern side of Columbia is just miraculous. Uh, if you're familiar with that area of town, you know that right across the street from us, Marshalls is coming in. And uh, they're going to open back up the Kmart Shopping Center, which is going to provide a lot of traffic over there. Whole Foods has already provided a lot of traffic there. Well, we took, bought these businesses and, and started trying to put them together. One of the things that, that made us want to do that is I really believe that there's two things in the world that unite people more than any two things else you can do. And if you, if you ever watch either of these things occur and really think about it, I think you'll come to agree with me. One is music. You get a group of people together, I don't care how diverse they are, I don't care what their political backgrounds are, I don't care what their social backgrounds are or their economic background, a group of musicians sitting down, jamming together, all those differences disappear. It all comes to, becomes about the shared experience. The only other thing I know of that does that is food. People sitting down and breaking bread together is a tradition that goes back to the beginning of time. And it is where the majority of the socialization that occurs in this country takes place over a meal, either at home, at a restaurant, it's something like this is a convenience for you to come in and, and get in and out into work. It's all about that shared experience. So what we've tried to do out at Chocolate Nirvana Bakery and Cafe is create an atmosphere that fosters that. We have tried to keep it local. We've tried to keep it relaxed and casual, but at the same time, make you feel important when you're there. And our cakes say the same thing. We use local ingredients as much as we can. We try to come up with unique uh, recipes and unique uh, for special events. Uh, for uh, St. Patrick's Day, we do our Irish cream cake, which is made with Guinness Stout and Irish whiskey and Bailey's cream. And if that doesn't get your, your St. Patrick's Day off to a good start, I don't know what else we can do other than just hook you up to an IV. <laughs> but, uh, so that's, that is where we are now. We're open over there at Fort Jackson. We serve lunch from 11 till 2, Monday through Friday. We're open every day of the week from 10 until 6, 
and then on Saturday from 10 to 3. But right now we're not serving lunch on Saturday. But you can come in, buy a cake, and uh, sit down and have a cup of coffee or a drink, and enjoy it there, or take it with you. And that was uh, some of the things that we've encountered along the way that we have seen to grow to grow our business. Uh, we have a much larger social media footprint now than we've ever had with the intent of uh, growing that even more. We've added cupcakes. Uh, my daughter uh, spent some time in Washington at GW and went to Georgetown Cupcakes and decided that we could do at least that well, if not better, if we would sell our stuff as cupcakes. So now we do that. And uh, so we've expanded that. Our future, we're headed probably within the next 12 months, we will be shipping uh, our cakes and cupcakes nationwide. Uh, that's in the future. Uh, also in the future is the uh, lunch on Saturday. We plan on going to that. We are currently have uh, had some success at really pioneering a new type of catering in Columbia. We're the only people that we feel like can actually do this with credibility because of our branding with Chocolate Nirvana. Is we do a dessert catering. If somebody's looking to have a event that is unique and different. Why do the same heavy hors d'oeuvres around the, the house, you know, the cocktail hour type thing with the, the beanie weenies and the sausages, the meatballs, and you've all seen the fair, it's all the same, you know what it's like. We have done successfully for a couple of people a dessert catering where we feature our desserts. We do them in uh, pedophore style size. We have coffee, Kahlua, liqueurs, wine, that we can serve with it and we set it up with the big summer fours and stuff to make a right, really nice presentation and it's nice because people will come in they eat dessert they don't feel like they have to substitute supper for it uh, yeah, they're not coming to your house to get full they're coming to taste the dessert and so we've had some success but we continue to expand that and that's where we're headed in the future uh, people tell uh, some of our product line that people say about us uh, you probably heard around town um, our Nirvana cake, which is flourless, and that of course makes it gluten free. Uh, people call that death by chocolate. So, uh, and it is, it's very chocolatey. This one has, that you're going to taste today, has some whipped cream in the middle. So it's a little bit, um, a little bit calmer than the death by chocolate. But uh, we have also said, as we said, with our bringing Nirvana to the masses one cake at a time, uh, another of our sayings around the shop is, as it rumored that Marie Antoinette was told by one of her uh, subordinates that the uh, there was no bread for the peasants. And she says, well, let them eat bouche, which is cake. Well, it's our contention, had we been in Paris at the time, the reign of terror probably wouldn't have taken place. <laughs> <laughs> they would have gone to Chocolate Nirvana and peace and Nirvana would have settled across the landscape. And where would we be now? France would not be a republic. <laughs> so, uh, with that said, I'll be more than happy to field questions. I don't have a question. I just want to say, speaking of 